How much home can you purchase with $50,000 or even $75,000 of income using an FHA loan? And the reason we're doing FHA is because FHA is the most lenient. It's the most flexible when it comes to underwriting guidelines, and it's also the most flexible with regards to debt to income ratio. It allows you to use the most amount of your income towards debt, and it also requires only a 3.5% down payment with credit scores as low as 580. So at the end of the day, FHA is going to allow you to maximize your qualifications when it comes to buying a home with a minimal down payment. Now, in today's video, I'm going to do some income calculations. I'm going to show you how to calculate mortgage payments so that you can actually take these calculations, if you will, at home, do some back of the napkin uh, numbers and figure out how much home you can actually afford to purchase if you pay close attention. But what I recommend instead of doing that is actually taking the time and speaking with a a mortgage professional. This video is more or less for novelty purposes than it is for you to use to actually calculate how much home you can purchase. I always recommend working with a mortgage professional. Don't use these numbers here. They're accurate, but don't use these numbers to figure out how much home you can afford. Speak to a professional. Let them guide you through the process because there's going to be some things that we don't talk about on here that they're going to need to verify to make sure that you actually qualify for that home. So again, just make sure you're working with that professional. And if you need one, I've put a link in the description below of someone I know, like, and trust that can guide you through that process. Now, when I started the video, I said, how much home can you purchase with $50,000 or $75,000 in income. Now there's quite a bit of difference in those two numbers as one is 50% higher than the other. But the reason I'm doing two calculations is because these are the most common incomes that people approach me with. So I thought I would do one video where I show you how to calculate the income for both as well as the debt to income ratio for both and show you how much home you can afford to purchase based on where we are in the market today. Now, with that said, I'm gonna do two different calculations. I'm gonna show you with a little bit of debt, how much home you can afford to purchase, as well as with no debt. And if you have no debt, you'll know exactly where you stand. And if you have a little bit more debt than what I'm doing in these calculations, you can run your own numbers and see exactly where you stand. Now, the very first calculation we need for today's video is we need to figure out how much monthly income you actually make. And for qualification purposes, when you're going through the pre-approval process, when you're trying to buy a home, lenders are looking at your gross monthly income. This is your income before any taxes come out. And so if you're a wage earner that just receives a W-2 every year, it's pretty easy to calculate these numbers. Now, if you're self-employed or you have multiple businesses and you receive 1099s from different employers, it's a little bit more complex. In fact, it's a lot more complex and it's more the reason that you need to make sure you're working with a professional so that they can calculate your income properly. As oftentimes I'm having conversations with people and they say, I make $100,000 a year, but they're not taking into account any of their expenses or any of their write-offs when in fact they're only showing say $25,000 on their tax return. So this number is super, super important to get correct from the start because everything else is based off this number. They're going to take that yearly income and they're going to divide it by 12 to figure out how much money you bring home every single month. Now, again, I know you're not bringing home this amount of money. Again, it's gross monthly income. So they're trying to figure out how much money you make before taxes every single month. So in the case of $50,000, once you divide that by 12, that gives you a number of $4,166 per month. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned we're using FHA because it's the most flexible, it's the most lenient when it comes to qualifying. And that's because FHA will allow a 57 debt to income ratio. Now, keep in mind, not every single person applying for an FHA loan is going to be able to get as high as a 57% debt to income ratio because you also need higher credit scores and some compensating factors to be able to get that high. But for qualification purposes, we're going to use that 57%, which means that out of that $4,166, that gross monthly income that we're talking about a moment ago, they will actually allow you to use $2,374 of that amount 
towards your debt to income. Now, if you're watching this wondering, okay, what goes into my debt to income? Well, your back end ratio, the 57% that we're talking about here, includes your mortgage payment, includes your property taxes, any mortgage insurance, homeowner's insurance on that property, as well as any other debts that you might have. And that's ultimately how they come up with the total debt to income ratio. So in this case, we can't exceed $2,374 for our total debt. Now, in this scenario, we're actually gonna run it two different ways. We're going to run it with a little bit of debt and with no debt. So with no debt, you know that your total debt to income ratio cannot exceed $2,374, which basically means your mortgage payment with everything included can exceed that number. But we're also going to include it, like I said, with a little bit of debt. And so for purposes of this video, what we're going to assume is that you have a $300 car payment, that you have a credit card or credit cards where the minimum payments total $50 per month and you have student loans that has an IBR payment of say $100 per month. So all in, you have $450 in total monthly debt that you're spending every single month, which means that you can only spend $1,924 on a mortgage payment based on that 57% debt to income ratio that we spoke about earlier. Now, the crazy thing is I did a similar video to this back in June of 2021. And I was using an interest rate at that time of two and a quarter percent on the calculations to be able to see how much home you could afford. Well, rates are quite a bit higher today. In fact, at the making of this video, we're sitting somewhere around 5.75%. And that's the rate that we're gonna use on a 30 year fix today to do our calculations, to see exactly how much the mortgage payment would be and see exactly how much home you can afford based on the numbers that we just spoke about. But before we dive into that, I wanna take a minute and ask a favor. If you find any value in this video at all, please do me a favor and hit that thumbs up. And also feel free to subscribe to the channel, not only to support me and help me accomplish my goal of helping educate more home buyers, but also to stay updated on everything real estate related. So now that we know exactly how much money can go out every single month towards a mortgage payment, we need to work backwards and figure out how much a home cost at a certain price point to see if you can actually afford to buy that home. So the first calculation I'm gonna do is on a $350,000 home. This is the same calculation I did a couple of years ago with a much lower interest rate, but since things have changed, I wanna update this video with where the payments are today so you know exactly where it stands. So if you're buying a $350,000 home and you're putting the minimal down with FHA, that means that you're putting down $12,250 which means you're financing $337,750. But here's the thing, with FHA loans, you have an upfront mortgage insurance premium that's added back to that loan amount. Because you're putting less than 20% down, the bank charges you 1.75% of the loan amount to insure themselves against default. So if you default, it's an insurance premium for them that, that you're paying essentially to protect them in case something goes wrong with the loan. And this is on every single FHA loan. You can't get around it, which is one of the downsides of using FHA. But with that said, once we take the 337,750 and we multiply it by 1.75%, we know that amounts $5,911. We're gonna add it back to that original loan amount of 337,750, which is gonna give us a base loan amount of $343,661. And with today's interest rates on a 30 year fixed at 5.75%, it's gonna give you a mortgage payment of $2,000 five dollars per month on top of that you're going to have property taxes now property taxes are going to vary by state here in california it's roughly 1.1 percent and in fact that's the nationwide average and that's what we're going to use in this video so if you're in a state that has high property taxes you're going to have to use the calculation from that state to change your numbers if you're in a state that has less you know, then 1.1%, obviously you're going to adjust there, but the nationwide average is 1.1%, which means your property taxes are gonna be $320.83. In addition, you're going to have monthly mortgage insurance on top of the upfront mortgage insurance. So you're paying the upfront mortgage insurance, but you're also paying mortgage insurance every single month. And this is required on every single FHA loan when you put less than 10% down. In fact, even if you do put 10% down, the mortgage insurance stays on the loan for the first 11 years. But that calculation is 
0.85, and that's multiplied by that base loan amount of 343,661 by that base loan amount of $343,661, which means your monthly mortgage insurance is going to be roughly $243. On top of that, you're going to have property insurance, homeowners insurance, if you will, and I'm estimating that around $100 per month. So all in, your total mortgage payment is going to be $2,669. Now, if you remember just a few minutes ago when we spoke about the amount of income that you could use towards your mortgage payment, you know, once we considered the debts that we have, that was $1,924. So in this case, we wouldn't be able to qualify for that $350,000 home because the mortgage payment was roughly $700 more than we had to allot towards that payment. So in this case, we couldn't qualify for a $350,000 home if we had that $450 of monthly debt. And in fact, we wouldn't be able to qualify for it if we had no debt and made $50,000 per year. Because even with no debt, if you remember, we had $2,375 to use towards our total debt. And in this case, the $350,000 home exceeds it. So in order to speed this video up, I'm not gonna go through the calculations of each one of these properties, but with $50,000 per year and $450 of debt that we mentioned earlier, you'd be able to qualify for roughly a $250,000 home home as the total payment on that property comes to $1,910 using the calculations that I used earlier. And just to break that down real quick, that's a $250,000 home, 3.5% down payment is $8,750, which gives you a loan amount of $241,250, once you add that upfront mortgage insurance back on that I mentioned at 1.75%, that's $4,221, which gives you a base loan amount of $245,471. At an interest rate of 5.75%, you've got a mortgage payment of $1,432. Top of that, you're gonna have the property taxes that we mentioned at 1.1%, which comes to 229. In addition, you're going to have the monthly mortgage insurance that we spoke about, that's 173 per month, and I'm estimating homeowner's insurance at roughly $75 a month, which gives you that total payment of $1,910. So in this case, if you made $50,000 per year, had roughly $450 of monthly debt, you'd be able to buy a $250,000 home. And with no debt, like we mentioned earlier, using $2,374, you'd be able to buy roughly a $300,000 home as the total payment on that one, using the same calculations, comes out to $2,277. Now, something to keep in mind here is that I'm using the max qualifying ratios at 57%. A lot of people out there aren't going to be able to use those ratios for one reason or another. They're not gonna be able to go that high. So these numbers might be a little bit higher depending on your full scenario. So another reason to make sure you're working with a mortgage professional, going over these numbers, having them do a full pre-approval, looking at your tax returns, looking at your credit scores, looking at everything to be able to give you accurate numbers. And one more time, if you need a professional, you don't have one, do me a favor and check the link below. Now at this point, you've probably got the gist on how these calculations work. So we're gonna do the same thing for $75,000 of income like we mentioned earlier in the video to show you exactly where you stand. So that's going to break down to $6,250 per month. And if we're using that same 57 back end ratio that I mentioned earlier. And just like we did on the other calculations, we're gonna run it with some debt and without debt. So without debt, we know it's $3,562 is the max that we can spend on our mortgage payment, if you will. We're also going to consider it with the same debts that we spoke about earlier, roughly $450 per month. So that you know equates to a $300 car payment roughly $50 in monthly credit cards that you're spending and $100 in student loan payments, so IBR payments. Now, the numbers might be different for you. It might be allotted in different places than what I'm talking about here, but it's roughly $450 of monthly debt, which means in that case, you can't spend more than $3,112 towards your mortgage payment so that you actually meet those FHA guidelines that we're talking about in this video. So in the case of $75,000 of income, you could actually buy that $350,000 home that we were speaking about earlier because the total payment on that was $2,669. So whether you had the $450 in debt or you didn't, you'd be able to qualify for that $350,000 home. But can you buy a $400,000 home? Well, in the case of a $400,000 home, 
Let's run the number. So 400,000 putting three and a half percent down, that's $14,000, which means you're financing $386,000. Now we still have to add that upfront mortgage insurance in there at 1.75%, which is $6,755. So we have a base loan amount of 392,755 at today's rate of 5.75% on a 30 year fixed. The mortgage payment is $2,292 per month. The property taxes at 1.1% are gonna be $300 and $66. The monthly mortgage insurance is going to equate to $278. And I'm estimating homeowner's insurance again at roughly $100 per month, which gives you a total mortgage payment of $3,036. So in the case of our example here, you'd be able to qualify with that $450 in debt in this case at $75,000 in income. So you'd be able to buy a $400,000 home just putting three and a half percent down. But what if you had no debt? and you made $75,000 in income. Well, at $450,000 at three and a half percent down, using the same calculations that we've used throughout this video, the total mortgage payment would be $3,403, which means that you'd be able to buy that $450,000 home only making $75,000 in income. Again, assuming you have no monthly debt and you're able to use that max qualifying ratio of 57%. So I know I just threw a lot of numbers at you, a lot of information at you. And there's something to understand here is that these numbers change all the time based on where interest rates go. So if interest rates come down, then in theory, you'd be able to qualify for more home. But if interest rates go down and home prices go up, then it more or less works out to the same calculations. But at the end of the day, you get the idea. The lower rates go, the more home you can actually qualify for. But as I mentioned, it's super important when you're running these numbers to make sure you're working with a mortgage professional so that they can run accurate numbers for you. Now, if you're a first time home buyer and you're watching this video and you're not sure where to start in the process, I gave you a link to to lenders to get started. But if you want a full home buyer course to guide you through the process, I took the time and created a course with over 50 modules that will guide you through the process. I break it down like I break down this video in simple, easy to understand modules that will really guide you through the process. So if you want to become an expert on home buying in 2023, that link is in the description below. Now, earlier I mentioned in the video about how lenient FHA guidelines were, but something to keep in mind when you're going through the pre-approval process, you're speaking to multiple lenders out there, just make sure you're working again with a professional, but you're also going to a broker. You're not going into a bank or one of these, you know, companies that doesn't do a lot of FHA loans. A lot of these companies have overlays on their programs. They're not super familiar with FHA. They don't do a lot of FHA. So just make sure you're working with a lender that understands FHA you know, doesn't have the overlays on their programs, can really use the max guidelines, if you will, uh, of 57%, because ultimately that's the way you're going to qualify for the most home if you're really looking to get the most out of the minimal down payment and the lower credit score options. But I'd love to know your thoughts. Have you used FHA before? What did you think about it? Are you going through the process now? You know, what do you think about the numbers that I gave here with regards to income? Are they realistic? Would you like to see a video with higher income calculations? Let me know in the comments below. Now, if you're new to FHA as a whole, you don't know all of the qualification guidelines. I just gave you some of the basics in this video. There's quite a bit more that you need to meet in order to use FHA. And I've actually taken the time to break that down in more detail in this video here.